let's dive right in. A while back, I published a video on a scripting tool I was working on called Quick Particles. And the idea, very simply, is that if you have a object, in this case, it's a plane, and if I tab into edit mode, you can see I've subdivided it many times. Quick Particles very simply adds a particle to every single vert and sets it up for immediate out of box use, whether that's with Booleans or vertex groups. Everything's kind of nicely arranged so that it just runs through all the steps for you. Now, the problem was that was set up as a script. It was available for free on my GitHub page, and you could download it, run the script, and then actually get all the benefits out of it. I find that a little bit inaccessible for some people, especially those not familiar with coding. So I have finally formed it into a complete add-on, and you can actually go ahead and download it. Again, it's linked on GitHub. It is free. There are a few features that I may or may not add in the future, depending on what happens with geometry nodes this year. And again, I'll follow that up as need be. But for the time being, you would simply have to download the .py file, then go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then install the .py file, find it. So you can see it's called quick particles, and then check the box. And once that's there, you can use it from your general search. So essentially, a quick promo of what it does. If you want more details, I'll link the other video in the description. But all you would do is you would go ahead, grab your object that you want to place particles on, hit F3 for search, and then you would search for quick particles. So if I go ahead and hit enter right now, because I had no other object selected, it simply added in a sphere and then placed it at every vert on this plane. And you can then scale it accordingly if you need it to be a little bit smaller or larger. You can also come to the particle systems options. You can change things like rotation. You can go through other aspects as needed. Now, this is the very simplified version of it. The sort of next level up version of it is that you can choose any object in your scene that you want. This is a phospholipid, and this model is available for free on Gumroad. I'll link that in the description as well. And then you would shift and click the object that you want to place it on. Once again, you would search for quick particles and run it, and it would actually place all of the particles where you need them to be. You can see that these are a little bit too small, so you'd have to come to the settings, and then you could just bring the scale up until they were roughly the size you want. You could also then enable the rotation, and then do things like change the phase and randomize it. And finally, if you want to, you could hide the emitter in both the render and the viewport, so you would very quickly have a nice phospholipid bilayer. Now, the real value of quick particles in my mind is, well, it does those things very quickly, but the very nice feature is that you can select multiple objects and then the object that you want to place the particle system on. And once again, if we run quick particles, you can see we now have the full set. So I'm going to scale these up and you can see it's also done one other thing. It's placed everything into a collection. So all of those phospholipids are now linked into this collection. So I can simply hide that if I don't want to see it. And the other thing is I can now in Blender 2.9 onwards, because it's in a collection, I can pick random, I can use object rotation, and I can also use count. So let's say I would like one of these, I believe this is the blue one, to be more represented, I just increase the relative count. And now I have more of the blue and fewer of the other two. I can also use seeds to explore different combinations if I want. And that's a very nice way to quickly and sort of randomly generate different possibilities for your scene. So Quick Particles is now available on GitHub. If I ever actually finalize some of the extra features that I want that I'm hoping will be released in geometry nodes, then I'll update as needed. Otherwise, if this is something that you think might be useful to your workflow, go ahead, give it a try, and hopefully you find it useful. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you enjoyed this, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.